Here on number 10, we're doing something similar to number nine, but with a weak acid being titrated with a strong base. Some of the process is exactly the same. Some of it gets a little bit different because we do have some equilibrium. So what we start with is we recognize, okay, I have a weak acid. I know it's molarity. I know it's volume and the K is given and we're adding a strong base to it. The first problem is the same idea. I just have my acid in solution with nothing else by it with nothing else with it. It's important to recognize that and to not try to make it too hard or add any math to it. It is just, what's the pH of this weak acid? So we've got Ka equals X squared over my molarity. I solve for my X, which is my hydrogen ion concentration, and the negative log of that gives me my pH. In the next few problems, we've got different versions of things that could be given maybe in free response, but likely broken down into pieces. But it's really good to understand the math to also be able to apply that and connect that to some of the concepts that we'll see. So here we have added some base and we wanna find the pH. We need to think about, are we at the equivalence point yet or not? If we had a graph, we could clearly see that, but in this case, we don't have one but we can kind of estimate or acknowledge, well, if I had 20 milliliters of this and this molarity is higher, then I haven't yet added enough base to neutralize it. So what I look at down here is how many moles of acid are in the solution, how many moles of base have been added to it, and I am thinking in terms of stoichiometry, because even though it is a weak acid, it is still a one-way reaction, and we are still reacting all of our acid with or excuse me, however much acid needs to react with all of our base, which is in this case the limiting, until I make my water and my product. As I'm doing that, we're kind of thinking, initially the pH starts and stays low as the HF or as the acid is the excess reactant. It is at the equivalence point that the base or the sodium hydroxide becomes my excess reactant. And then after that, the thing that would be in solution is the sodium hydroxide. So I looked at how many moles of hydrogen fluoride or HF minus the moles of NaOH. That told me how much HF was still in solution. But an important piece with that is our limiting reactant determines how much product we can make. So that means we've made 0.001 moles of water, but we've also made 0.001 moles of salt or NaF. And because NaF is a part of the equilibrium with HF, we can kind of think of it as a common ion effect, that's gonna affect our K expression. It's gonna make the math harder and harder in a way that you wouldn't have to actually solve for this on the AP test, because there's no way to avoid a quadratic. But when we're looking at this for either online homework, just for practice, for knowledge, or for putting the numbers with the concepts that make sense, we take our molarity moles over volume to get the molarity of the acid that is still in solution and the new moles over the volume of right here, sorry, the conjugate base or that negative ion that we have made. So here, our initials are not how much we started with at the beginning. It is how much do we currently have in solution? So I've got a certain amount of acid. We don't know how much hydrogen ion has dissociated, but we do know we've made a certain amount of conjugate base all of those in terms of molarity. This is still decreasing to make hydrogen ion. Well, that will increase the amount of fluoride a little bit. And when we look at this, because these values are close enough to our K value, we cannot ignore our minus and plus Xs. It wouldn't be too different in terms of the answer. If we had a much smaller K, you could do this by ignoring the Xs. So we could put that there, that there, and just solve for this. So it is possible to have a problem in this realm broken into pieces on the AP exam, but not this specific one because it does require the quadratic. Well, I got fancy and I solved for it here and I did the negative log of it and found that my pH went up, but it didn't even go up that much, even though we've neutralized a lot of it. Because remember, a pH is a log scale, so we're talking about the hydrogen ion concentration changing by a factor of 10. And we went from here to here, it changed by a factor of almost 10, but not even quite that. Then we would be thinking maybe more easy math, multiple choice, or yes, a question by itself. Um, find the volume needed to reach the equivalence point. Here, I did the shortcut method. 
molarity times volume times the number of hydrogen ions, molarity times volume times hydrogen ions, it gave me that. Then part D gets me some easy math as well. If 25 milliliters got me to my equivalence point, half of that got to my half equivalence point, 12 and a half. And we can kind of connect that back with what we saw here. We can think about it conceptually. I haven't yet reacted away half of my HF when I used 10 milliliters, but I was getting closer. So it makes sense that 12 would be half of it. We could do all of the math needed to prove it in different ways, but with the flow of this question, it makes a lot more sense get your equivalence point, get your half equivalence point. And the other nice thing is that we know simple math about this. You've heard it in the videos for the notes over and over. You need to hear it over and over and over. The pH at the half equivalence point equals the pKa. Negative log of the Ka gives me my pH. So it's raised just a little bit more than it was on part B. Now at the equivalence point, we are thinking about what is still in solution. So the equivalence point means that we're, we've kind of finished our limiting excess or our stoichiometry part of the problem. I've added enough base to react with all of the acid. We've done this math before, so I'm not re-showing this work, but remember we proved that the initial moles of HF was 0 0.0025. We then would think we need that much base to get to the equivalence point, 0 0.00225, or two, 0 0.0025, sorry. But both of those are gone because we had that many moles of acid, that many moles of base. Those are not the things still in solution. I've made water and I have made NAF, my product. So we also need to think about, I had 20 milliliters of acid. I know I needed to add 25 milliliters of base. And this tells me what is the molarity of that fluoride ion? The sodium fluoride is the thing impacting the pH. It's doing that by reacting with water in a small amount to form this equilibrium, which produces hydroxide ion. So we did the pH of salts previously. That's what we're focusing on for the equivalence point pH of a weak with a strong. What is the pH of the salt? So it's a KB because it produces hydroxide ion. That means I need to take the given Ka and change it to a Kb. Divide by the Kw allows me to do that. I know my K, I know my molarity of solution, and then I have x squared on top. That x for Kbs gives me my hydroxide ion concentration. I change from hydroxide ion concentration to hydrogen ion concentration. The negative log of that allows me to find out my pH. A lot to do just in part F let alone the whole problem. So as an entire problem, this would either be a full long AP question, or it would maybe not even have all of these pieces to it. But some of the keys are really important. So you could have any of these parts. You could have some of these parts by themselves. You could even have a part like F that is broken down into multiple steps so that if you're struggling a little bit on one part, you can still get to some of the other parts. But on this part, it is super, super important to know and to think about, I have the conjugate base of a weak acid, so my pH is above seven. Even without the exact math, we can support and prove